Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss what goes into a business casual capsule wardrobe so you maximize the outfits you can get from very few but classic and versatile wardrobe pieces. <laughs> Since the 1960s, more and more men have been interested in a more casual alternative to formal suits for everyday outfits. It all started in Hawaii with Aloha Friday, where people would wear Hawaiian shirts to the office. Later, it was adopted by many other men and it became Casual Fridays, which was of course more office appropriate and led into the entire category of the business casual dress code. From there, it caught on to more workplaces and it became more popular over the decades. Of course, men interested in dressing up have now created the opposite, which is called Formal Friday, but that'll be subject of another video. So what does the business casual dress code actually stand for? Well, in a nutshell, it means no suits, but also no jeans. Even though a business casual dress code doesn't include slippers, flip-flops, or a t-shirt, it is definitely more on the casual side of things. To balance it, it incorporates somewhat formal features into the wardrobe. Ultimately, how formal or informal business casual actually is largely depends on the company and their culture and what people wear there. At an IT startup, the business casual dress code will be interpreted very differently than at a traditional law firm. Generally, it's always better to be slightly overdressed than underdressed, and you have to be comfortable in the outfit you're wearing. For much more in-depth information about the business casual dress code guide, please check out this video here. So why should you opt for a business casual capsule wardrobe? When it comes to formal wear, things are limited. For business casual outfits, there's a much larger range. Of course, on the flip side, that means by owning a lot of different garments, it may be harder to choose what you're actually gonna wear. If you often feel overwhelmed or you can't decide on what to wear, a business casual capsule wardrobe can really help you find those few versatile pieces that you can basically wear with anything else so you don't have to think a lot about it, but you always look well put together. On top of that, having to buy fewer garments means you actually save more money, you have a much smaller wardrobe, which means less closet space, and each item becomes more significant. If you want to learn more about the concept of a full capsule wardrobe, what goes into it, the details, and what to avoid, please check out this video here. So what does it actually look like to build a lean business casual wardrobe? When going to work five days a week, you don't want to appear like you're wearing the same clothes over and over again in the same combinations. However, if you have a few core pieces that you can use to build a wardrobe around, you'll always look like you wear different outfits when in fact you're only changing a few things. A key element of a capsule wardrobe is to stick with earthy tones and dark solids and then to pair them with pastel colors, not bold, strong hues, because that way you're just much more flexible in what you combine with what. Also, those bold hues will really stand out and people will remember the guy who always wears the orange shirt to work. Now, while a full capsule wardrobe typically starts at about 37 pieces, if you just focus on business casual, you can have fewer than that. So now let's talk about the specific individual pieces you should add to your business casual capsule wardrobe. First of all, it is the jacket, sport coat, or blazer. Again, it depends entirely on your office. If jackets are encouraged, then it pays to have a few more, maybe up to five. If you rarely get a chance to wear them, just invest in one navy blazer. To learn more about the ins and outs of blazers, please check out our in-depth blazer guide here. Also, if you're curious as to what off-the-rack blazer is worth its money in the sub $500 category, check out this video. So why is a navy blazer such a foundational piece? Well, it is very easy to pair with other things and it's a very classic garment. By adding contrasting buttons, traditionally in gold or maybe in mother of pearl, you create a certain sense of casualness without going all the way to the bottom of the spectrum. While a single-breasted blazer is the gold standard, you can also go with a double-breasted one, which makes you look a bit more powerful. Of course, there are hundreds of different shades of navy. For a more classic look, go with something darker. You can also go with something a little lighter, but always make sure you stick with an overall navy feel and look. 
While many blazers come with matching dark buttons, I suggest you go with something in horn or mother of pearl that's contrasting and stands out. Why? Well, on top of prodding you with a more casual look, you avoid looking like you're wearing an orphan suit jacket. Once you have the blazer, adding sport coats is another essential part of a business casual capsule wardrobe. Subtle patterns such as a little check, maybe a Glen check, a Prince of Wales check, or maybe a houndstooth are a welcome addition that just make everything a bit more casual and relaxed. Subdued colors are king. For summer, it could be something maybe in white and blue. For winter, it could be something in dark brown and beige. If you want to be a bit more daring, subtle colors in shades of green or in fresco fabrics may be something you can wear too. In the winter, maybe a tweed jacket in a light herringbone and some form of brown is a great companion. If business casual is what you wear all day every day to the office, I suggest to get at least one navy blazer and four sport coats. That way you can give them a rest after a long day, the garments will last you longer and it won't look like you're always wearing the same thing. Next up, let's talk about shirts. Ideally, you want at least a two week rotation, which means 10 shirts, but 15 or 20 shirts are probably better. As you might notice, I'm a close horse and I somewhat struggle with a capsule wardrobe. So for me, more is better. So if you're taking the capsule seriously, maybe just start with a two week rotation. I would add only button down shirts with a collar. You can start with things like an Oxford cloth button down, for example, or you could have pastel colors in light blue, maybe something off-white or eggshell. You can also have subtle stripes or checks, but if you want to learn more about the first shirts that you should add to your wardrobe, please check out this video here. No matter how many shirts you have, either work with a necktie, and if that's too formal for the office, then skip that and just unbutton the top button. Never leave it buttoned without any form of neckwear because it looks like little altar boy at the wedding. In more laid back offices, polo shirts may also be an option in colors like navy, white, maroon, green, or maybe brown. Remember, the key is that the colors are neutral and that they go with many other things. Skip the rugby shirts and the bright orange polo shirts. Your shirts should always be tucked in and not untucked, which brings us to the next item, trousers or pants. At a minimum, you should have three trousers. I think in a more practical world, you need at least six. One of them should be a pair of dress pants that could be in gray, charcoal, or navy. I think for maximum flexibility, something in a medium gray is probably best. If you can get another one and you live in a climate where it gets a bit colder, a pair of gray flannels are always great and pair well with a lot of things. They don't have to be solids, they can be small pinpoints or maybe even a very subtle houndstooth. Whether you're pleated or not is entirely up to you and why pleated pants are oftentimes advantageous, you can learn in this video here. Of course, the quintessential pants for a business casual look are khakis or chinos. Of course, the classic colors are khaki or beige, but you can also get them in slightly different colors. To learn more about chinos, please check this in-depth guide here. For the colder months of the year, a pair of corduroy trousers can be the perfect companion because they're warmer, because they're thicker, yet the whole look and feel are much more casual than let's say a pair of dress pants. Again, earthy colors and browns, tans and greens are your best friend here. For the cooler months of the year, having vests or cardigans or maybe sweaters can be a great addition to a business casual capsule wardrobe. Ideally, a knitted one in colors such as gray or beige so they're contrasting with your jackets are perfect because that way you can wear them with or without a jacket. If you wanna skip the jacket and just go with knitwear, I suggest a cardigan is great because you can take it on and off very easily without messing up your hair. If you go for a sweater and you wear ties, definitely go with a V-neck, otherwise a crew neck may be an option for you. We always suggest to wear the cardigan or the sweater over a dress shirt with the exception of a turtleneck sweater, which in itself can look really dapper with just a navy blazer, for example, or a sport coat. Overall, having about two vests and two sweaters or cardigans is a good number for a capsule wardrobe. To learn more about sweaters and cardigans, please check out this video here. In terms of outerwear, it really depends on where you live. I'd say in general, about three pieces of outerwear are a minimum standard and 
In colder areas, you can maybe wear a pea coat, which is a shorter overcoat, and you can learn more about the details of that garment here. A trench coat is probably something that's great wherever you go because it can be worn in the transitioning seasons, such as spring or fall. When it's rainy, it's a very classic garment. It also comes traditionally in a beige or khaki tone, which is more casual than, let's say, a navy dark overcoat. Of course, you guessed it, we also have an in-depth trench coat guide here. And we even discuss if the Burberry one is worth its money or not. If you want to learn more about overcoats, we have an entire series about them, and you can even take a peek at my collection here. No business casual wardrobe is complete without footwear. I suggest you get at least three pairs of shoes and two pairs of boots. For business casual, I suggest you get a pair of brown shoes, ideally a Derby or an Oxford. It can be a suede leather, but you want something that's a little more casual and a black cap to Oxford is not the right shoe for this occasion. Having a slightly different shoe, such as a mock strap shoe or a loafer is also a great idea. Personally, my favorite shoe color is burgundy because it's dark enough to be worn with something a little more formal, but casual enough to be worn with jeans and it always works well. In my book, you should have at least one Oxford, one Dorby and one loafer. If you're in a very casual environment, maybe boat shoes or leather sneakers may be acceptable too, but that's just not my kind of style. In terms of boots, I think a suede chaka boot in brown and then maybe a Chelsea boot in a darker color, such as dark brown, is a really great investment. If you're more gravitating towards the formal side, a pair of Balmoral boots, maybe with a suede insert in a slightly contrasting color, can be really cool. Otherwise, a pair of Jodhpur boots can be really interesting because even though they have a buckle, that's usually covered by your pants and it makes for a very sleek looking boot. Of course, we have video guides about all these different types of shoes and even videos about what you should buy first. Check out our extensive archive. Once you have all your foundational pieces, it's time for the accessories. And best of all, they don't count in numbers, so you can have more of them. Now, personally, I love to play around with different accessories because with comparatively a very small amount of money, you can create outfits that look very different and provide a very handsome feel. So people will look at you and think you have an entirely new outfit, but in fact, you haven't changed anything about the foundations of your wardrobe. So what does it mean specifically? Well, for some people, it does not include ties. In my book, it definitely does include ties. Of course, rather than going with a traditional threefold silk jacket woven ties, you can spice it up a little bit. That means adding more texture. And in my mind, knit ties are the ideal companion. If you want a little less texture, a granite tie can also be great. Alternatively, you can go with a silk, but something like a shanton silk stripe, such as this tie here, or maybe a wool tie. They all add texture and visual interest, all the while keeping it rather casual. In terms of colors, you want to pick something that is contrasting. And if you have a solid navy blazer, maybe you get a model yarn tie, such as the knit tie I'm wearing here, or I could also pair it with a slightly patterned tie to just make it visually interesting on a different scale. If you're not shying away from bolder statements, you can also wear bow ties, but rest assured, people will likely remember you as the bow tie guy. That being said, when I just started out with classic menswear, I wasn't comfortable wearing bow ties, but today I really enjoy wearing them. I created a video to help you maybe overcome that fear of wearing bow ties. Now, even if you don't like wearing bow ties or ties, adding a pocket square to your outfit instantly elevates your look. To learn how you can combine pocket square with your outfits, check out this video here. For business casual looks, I suggest you get something with a nice pattern, either in silk or wool patterns that are printed, or you could get solid linen pocket squares with contrasting cross stitches on the edge. It just makes everything a little more fresh and not so stuffy and old school looking. Now, while that may not be for everyone, I found that wearing a boutonniere really gets you some attention in a subtle way and compliments are guaranteed. If you have a very limited number of shoes, adding a pair of colorful shoelaces can change the look of the entire shoe without breaking the bank. We have a rich selection of business casual appropriate accessories in our shop, so head over here and take a look. It will definitely elevate your outfit. With a business casual dress coat, socks are not optional. 
So ideally for an office, they should always be over the calf because people don't want to see your hairy legs. When it comes to bags, I know backpacks are popular, but they really make you look more like a schoolboy rather than a grown man. So having a nice brown leather briefcase or bag is really the way to go. Now, while that's all good in theory, we actually put together a little business casual capsule wardrobe and what that could look like for you. First, there is a charcoal gray flannel jacket paired with a checked cotton shirt in shades of white and blue. It's paired with a pair of khaki cotton chinos and brown hole cut Oxfords. It's all tied together with a brown grenadine tie from Fort Belvedere and a brown patterned silk pocket square, likewise from Fort Belvedere. It has tones of brown and blue, thus tying everything together. For my socks, I went with something in navy and royal blue striped by Fort Belvedere, and it provided a nice contrast between the khaki chinos and the brown shoes. In this ensemble, the jacket and shoes are more formal, the shirt and trousers are more casual, which leads to a happy medium. The accessories can all work with a variety of formalities, and the colors of the outfits, which are mostly neutral, provide a certain element of harmony. Let's say you don't have a gray flannel jacket. You could also have a more casual one, like a tweed jacket. Here I have one in a green and burgundy tone. It has a very nice herringbone pattern, and I'm adding a light blue paisley silk pocket square, which picks up the color of the shirt. I could combine it with a pair of brown penny loafers, or maybe even a pair of olive green shoes picking up the color of the jacket. Or I could wear a brown modeled Donegal tweed jacket. And I, again, would switch out the pocket square. Here I have something that is purple with orange and green. It's a wool silk pocket square from Fort Belvedere. Or if you don't have tweed, you can wear any type of sport coat. For example, here it's a brown sport coat in worsted wool with a red window pane over plaid and a handcrafted linen pocket square in pale red from Fort Belvedere. It has some nice contrast edge stitching and it picks up the red color of the check and the white of the shirt. Of course, you could also wear brown penny loafers, for example, or maybe a pair of cognac colored monkstrap shoes. A second, somewhat different outfit is this brown and mustard yellow Prince of Wales check sport coat in a nice soft cashmere. I'm pairing it with a light blue cotton flannel dress shirt and cuffed navy dress pants or slacks with pleats. I'm combining it with a pair of brown Norwegian split toe shoes and a yellow silk knit tie from Fort Belvedere. The yellow picks up the other yellow tones in the outfit and ties it all together, but it also provides enough contrast on the shirt. Again, to make it all uniform, I'm pairing it with a pale yellow linen pocket square, also from Fort Belvedere. The socks are navy and yellow striped, so that I pick up the yellow, but also work with the pants and provide enough contrast with the shoes. If you look at this outfit, it's very different than the first one because here the jacket and the shoes are more casual and the trousers and the shirt are a bit more formal. The accessories here are more casual than in the previous example, but they're still versatile and harmonious in color. Now, of course, you may not always want to wear a jacket, so you can also wear sweaters. For example, here I'm wearing a pastel blue Oxford cloth button down shirt with a white v-neck tennis sweater and blue accents, which is very preppy and I like to wear it. I'm pairing it with black corduroys. For footwear here, I choose black Belmore boots with a suede insert. And even though they're the same color, they appear different to the eye because the suede reflects light differently. Whenever I have sweaters, I prefer V-necks because they allow me to wear a tie, which looks very handsome and makes people look into my face. Here I have a red and white houndstooth tie in a silk bourrette, which is a very coarse weave and underlines the casualness of the ensemble. You can find the tie here. Of course, I can also wear it with a paletot overcoat and a nice scarf or maybe a boutonniere, and you could never tell that I have a rather casual outfit underneath of it. Keep in mind, these are just a few outfit ideas that are supposed to get you started and think about your capsule wardrobe in a way that you can take certain pieces, change them up, and they look very, very different even though there are just maybe two items in your entire outfit that have changed. Style is manifold and you can work with whatever you have in your wardrobe. Just experiment and it's important to start and sooner or later you'll find some favorites. In today's video, I'm wearing, of course, a business casual outfit that could be together from a capsule wardrobe. I'd say it's a bit more on the formal side. I'm wearing a navy blazer. It has some silver metal buttons. I'm combining it with a light blue shirt with French cuffs 
And so I'm wearing cufflinks. I opted for silver cufflinks because I also have a silver belt buckle and a silver pinky ring. My tie is an orange mottled version. It's a silk knit tie from Fort Belvedere, which just gives a little pop to the outfit. And I'm combining it with a printed silk pocket square from Fort Belvedere, which has a little blue pattern because you never wanna have a pocket square that is matching your tie exactly. For my pants, I opted for the classic khaki chinos. This is maybe a lighter shade and more of a sand. And I'm combining it with brown suede ankle boots in a Chelsea style. I'm tying the shoots together with the pants with a pair of shattered stripe socks from Fort Belvedere in dark brown and beige. So it just looks smooth and elegant. You can find all the accessories I'm wearing along with many others that are business casual appropriate in our shop here. Thank <laughs> you.